Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 29 of SBL and today's topic is financial analysis and decision making techniques there are two areas that we are going to cover this is the second lecture under your finance section the previous lecture was lecture 28 okay so as I told you there are going to be three lectures under finance section that is lecture 28 29 and the next section lecture 30 which is going to be cost and management accounting before we move on to our last section of the SBL syllabus okay so here this part of the syllabus you can expect some calculation questions you might be given some excel or some calculations or some financial statements anything could be given in SBL exam right even though we say SBL is full theory there are no calculations it's a wrong it's a myth you still can expect a question there will be some not in majority maybe for four marks five marks or whatever it is small portion of it will be for calculation and that calculation could be from any area of your uh, syllabus like it could be from a financial management it could be from a performance management it could be from your financial reporting anything because sbl includes all the knowledge of all your papers all your previous papers that you have given tax audit accounting performance management financial management right so here we are going to focus on funding strategy okay whether you have to invest whether you have to pay dividend okay everything requires uh, how are you going to fund it because as a business in a business funding is very important that's why we're going to study this what are the types of finance what are the cost second decision making techniques how do you make a how do you decide on something there are some techniques that you should know okay financial reporting implications what are the implications of decision making on financial reporting dealing with risk and uncertainty in decision making see any decision making okay you are going to make it for the future it does not come without risk and uncertainty some risk will be there some uncertainty will be there you should know the techniques to deal with it and the last section it is dealt in your financial management or your afm advanced financial management in detail but here in SBL we don't want those detailed uh, knowledge but partial knowledge is required okay so let's start with funding strategy before I start funding strategy in each area this time we are going to do a question for example on funding strategy there is one question decision making technique there is another question then uh, there are questions on each topic okay in this lecture so you have to watch this lecture till the end because how to solve an SBL question even though this is not a full-fledged SBL exam one question only but anyway that one question comes with professional skills so you should know how to get those professional skills I will show you and how to write an answer okay a good SBL answer difference between a bad and a good SBL answer okay so let's start with funding strategy okay when you're making that decision you have to think what is the value and what are the needs of the wider stakeholders okay so you must identify these things which SBUs need finding SBUs means strategic business unit you must be having 10 departments you should know which department needs the funding the most imaginely right which you can delay this is a decision you have to make as a financial manager how funding can support strategic decision remember the funding that you choose there are many ways of funding but it should su suit your strategic decisions okay we'll show how what type of funding they need these are the three questions you must identify even in exam also you, you can see that sometimes they might give you alternative funding strategy you have to select which one is the best based on these three questions now Funding strategies in the BCG matrix. Earlier in our uh, SBL lecture, we went through BCG matrix. We know what it is, right? The matrix, the four quadrants, cash cow, problem child, star, dogs. Yes, exactly. So the way you fund changes. The style of your funding changes in each of the stages. Okay. It depends where you are at your life cycle at the moment. Are you a star? Are you a star cash cow? Are you a problem child or are you a dog? Depending on it, your funding strategy will change. Let's see this for an example. So if you are a star, high growth, we know. High business risk. Okay. 
use some retained earnings so what i what should be a funding strategy you can use your retained earnings because already you are a star you must have enough uh, you must have earned enough so you have enough fund inside the organization you don't need to seek external so you can use your retained earnings and a new equity from investors to seek growth high reinvestment rates or medium dividends because you are going to reinvest it in the business so that business grows okay the amount that is left to pay as a dividend will be less or you can say medium for stars come into cash cow cash cow you know is high growth sorry uh, high market share low growth okay so here the business risk will be medium and you can use retail earnings and if debt if necessary sometimes you might have to use debt large net cash inflows to support dividends remember cash cow is the one where you're going to have the largest net cash inflow because it's, a, it's in a matured market no it's not growing but you have captured the enough of the market share so you are getting the net cash inflow third we are moving to problem child high growth high business risk very high business risk in the problem child in fact you can use equity from venture capital why venture capital do you know what are the features of venture capital see venture capital are the organization that invest in high growth companies that are in the infant industry infant stage they're just growing this might be very high but venture capital is invest in those companies so because it's a high business risk you yourself is using equity from outside that is venture capital you do not have so much of dividend to pay in the short term at least so low or zero dividend dog dog has low growth and low market share okay business risk is also low so you can use debt until divest and zero reinvestment rates so high dividends you cannot reinvest in the organization what is to reinvest it's a dog it's going to decline so no use of reinvesting the other paid as a dividend now let us go to an illustration matching funding strategy to your strategic business unit for example let's say your company is following a differentiation strategy okay and you are sitting where in a problem child so there you need high level of investment so what do you do you need funding to improve your process because you are in the differentiation remember you have to improve your process you have to obtain better resources you have to innovate you have to market the competitive differences okay to do all those things you need lots of fund at least in the short term so that you can cover the losses okay so as a financial manager your job is how best to provide this funding there are so many ways but not everything will work okay so both the need for funding and the funding strategy itself would be very different if this was a major spu in a cash cow position understand if this was in some other position in the bcg matrix the way you fund your funding strategy will be different that's what you need to understand funding strategy matters it changes now we are moving to the sources of finance this is a bit easier because you have studied this in financial management okay so this is that diagram okay sources of finance let's start with there are three one is equity one is debt one is other first we'll start with equity for equity two types either you using your own retained earnings either you're using ordinary share okay for debt long term loan if it's medium sorry if it's for long term you're using debenture preference share if it's medium term you're using leasing higher purchase and loans and if it's short term you're using credit trade credit and overdraft and for other okay common grants subsidies these are other sources of finance and initial coin offering forget about it it's not there from this year onwards and this new syllabus ico you can ignore okay we're not going to go through that so now let's start factors to consider when choosing a financial financing package how do you decide are you going to take a loan versus a trade credit or loan versus equity or retained earnings versus uh, debenture how do you decide this other factor number one is cost okay in detail I'm, we have an explanation for this first we'll go through that list cost number two you see the control third availability fourth 
gearing fifth security sixth cash flow and seventh exit road so these are the seven factors you need to consider let's start with cost cost means you go by the cheap which one is cheaper is it bank overdraft or bank loan mostly bank loan is cheaper than overdraft why because it is less risky from the bank's perspective bank loan they know the fix that you are going to pay them a fixed uh, installment for a fixed period of time and loan are secured also second risk to the investor is the main determinant of the cost of finance when you have to see the cost of finance remember the risk to you what is the risk if the risk is higher cost will be higher third usually okay debt is cheaper than equity finance okay why see when you are pay, taking a debt that means loan or anything you have to pay interest on that loan right interest is just deductible you deduct tax after you deduct interest that means you are paying less tax you are saving on tax when you are taking debt but equity for equity what are you doing you are paying dividends and dividends is often deducted after paying the tax so it's not having any impact on the tax it's not saving any tax therefore equity is more expensive than debt if you have to prove it like that but you don't have to prove it you don't have to explain all those things just understand debt is usually cheaper than equity finance that's how it works okay if you want to know more detail you have to attend my afm classes okay the whole chapter one whole chapter is on this only debt versus equity anyway short term loans are cheaper than long term loans definitely because they are less uncertain interest rate risk interest rate is known in the short term right coming to the next the issue cost of debt are also lower than for equity yes when you are issuing debt the cost is less than equity second control see when you are taking a debt over equity what happens debt will not give you any voting right remember even if you have preference share also you will not have any voting right that means you are not having any control of the organization and if you are issuing shares public issue of shares means you are losing control or even if you are not losing at least it will change the balance of the control that you have by reducing or increasing your number of shares third right issue see sometimes you can have right issue you must have heard this right right issue a right issue will not change your control because right issue means you are giving the existing shareholder only the new shares okay so most companies offer this new shares to existing shareholders first as they have pre emission rights what is pre emission rights pre emission rights means it is first dedicated to this existing shareholders they are offered first after that you are offering it to the public it's reserved for them that is the meaning of pre emission okay availability the third factor you have to see which one is available which one is not sometimes even if you want to take more debt you cannot take you must have breached that covenant already you must have exited the gearing level already or share could shareholders afford a right issue of the size suggested can you if you yes it's available otherwise you cannot go for right issue third difficult to issue equity fund quoted remember if you are having an unquoted company it's very difficult to issue your equity or issue your shares fourth factor is gearing even though we say debt is cheaper than equity it has some cost you cannot keep on increasing debt forever because after a certain point of time it will give a risk to the shareholder what is that risk financial risk they might face bankruptcy and all those things because you have an obligation to pay the interest now whether you make a profit or a loss okay so in that case debt makes the equity also more expensive so there are two effects of increase gearing one if you go by the positive side you are going to have cheap finance on the negative side extra financial risk for the shareholder so you have to you have to weigh both of this and see which one the benefit or the risk is more to see the effect of net to see the net effect of gearing we have to look at the theories of gear there are so many theories of gearing which says what is the best gearing level so many theories which we have done in financial management and later you are going to do it in afm okay but here you don't need all those theories for sbl not needed 
just understand that what is an optimal level of gearing there must be some level let's say 30 percent 40 percent 50 you should not exit that level if you exit you are going to say face the negative side rather than positive side okay basically in your exam you have to discuss the factor if they ask you which are you taking if you have to justify that you are taking a certain finance let's say you have chosen debt in your exam over equity you have to explain through this factor that's it you don't have to explain all these theories and all those things not needed because as i told you before sbl is not purely it's not a knowledge paper knowledge based question that you are getting in sbl no application security security is usually needed for debt for equity no they don't ask right so in your question you can look at the statement of financial position and see whether there are some asset that has been given as a security for the debt or not okay mostly you can see assets like land and buildings but for service industry remember it will be difficult to give as a service you cannot give asset as a as a, as a security for a service industry why because in service industries is mostly people you do not have so much of assets like land and building machinery plant you don't keep those you mostly use people cash flow remember this this is a rule of thumb that is you have to match the lifetime of finance with your project flow let's say your project you need cash flow for five years so you have to use a medium term finance if you need if your cash flow is for 10 years you need a long term finance you understanding let's say your project is for one year and you are using a debenture not worth it debenture is a long term source of finance you cannot use it just for one or two years of cash flow a project you understanding second if project cash flows are uncertain remember if project cash flows are uncertain in that case equity is better because remember dividend you it's not an obligation if you want you can cut the dividend if necessary that's why equity is better and if you're having a fixed interest it makes your budgeting easier try to avoid loans maturing at the same time let's say you have taken two loans both are maturing at the same time maturing means both are ending at the same time you have to make the repayment let's say you have taken two loans for two different projects both are ending after three years that means you have to make the repayment at the same time for both the both the loans so try to avoid that situation because you may not have as much cash inflow during that time to pay both the loans rather keep different time take a loan where the majority peers are different for two different loans you understand in practice a cash flow focus is essential yes whatever the funding you need you need a cash flow focused last exit road could the company repay the finance early for example if you are taking leases let's say lease is your source of finance remember leases include penalty clauses are you able to fulfill the rules the terms and conditions under leases if not penalty clauses are there second can investors get their money quickly remember if it's unquoted very difficult third venture capitalists they want their money back in five to seven years are you able to do that so all the seven factors needs to be taken into account before deciding a correct financing strategy now we are moving on to decision making techniques but before moving on to decision making techniques we are going to do a question on funding strategy so let's do that test your understanding too okay so here we have two options and you have to decide which one is the best or what are the factors they have to take into account before deciding the two options one is loan option loan notes that is debt the other one is bank loan both are debt but which debt is better okay so evaluate the factor that the board of all sen should consider before deciding upon which source of finance to select remember the question didn't ask which source of finance they asked before deciding which source of finance what are the factor evaluate verbs are very important very very important in any question okay because it will tell you what you need to do evaluate means okay i will tell you one thing this you can apply in any paper any paper in ssc evaluate means 
giving the pros and the cons and then your recommendation this is the meaning of evaluate let's see the professional skill illustrate commercial acumen in exercising judgment on the most approved source of finance commercial acumen is often the difficultest out of all okay it is the most difficult out of all the other five professional skill like communication uh, evaluation analysis professional skepticism this is quite easier to show this is a difficult why because this means you should have a wider understanding of the subject something which is not there in the case study also you should be able to tell through your previous experience or you must have come across that before something like that you should be able to link we'll show that also how to show it in an answer so first we'll read the question okay here they have given in the background the first one or two paragraphs is always about the background of the company that you should know before going on the options directly otherwise you will not be able to link it to the case study see all sun is considering a takeover of a smaller company in the same industry okay issue is takeover Albestin is currently generating losses, but Austin believes that although it may take up up to two years, so they are generating losses. Although it may take up to two years to turn the business around, significant returns can be made from the acquisition in the long term. Directors have estimated that 10 million would be a suitable purchase price, so they are now considering their various financing options. So this is for takeover that they want to finance. Austin has a very low level of gearing. Please, whenever they give facts like this, low level of gearing, losses underline highlight this are very important you should make use of this in your answer okay because this will decide this will help you which finance to take so the directors are keen to use debt finance to avoid the high issue cost on equity and to attract tax relief on debt interest following two options has been identified also has been advised by his investment bankers that it could issue public 10 million of two person coupon loan notes with interest paid annual in areas this coupon loan notes with an effective fixed charge of seven person per annum Loans would last for four years and would redeemed at 30% premium. Loan notes would require a fixed and a floating charge over the assets of this one. There would also be some covenant in the loan note agreement. Some covenant, uh, so fixed and floating charge. Bank loan. The bank has offered a 10 million variable interest at 8%. Interest would be payable half yearly in a year and rate then reset for the next six months. Loan would be repayable in full at par at the end of six years. Loan would also require fixed and a floating charge. This would be extensive covenant. There would be an extensive covenant in the loan agreement. Already you know some differences. You can go through it now, right? How do you start this answer? Before you answer also, you should know how to answer, how to approach a question. In what way you have to present an answer? It's a key skill that you need to learn. You have to first divide this answer in paragraphs. Since we don't have marks here, if you are doing a revision kit question, you know you might be in a better position to answer because you have the marks to help you how many points you have to write one mark one point since here we are not given marks okay but we'll just go by we'll not write too much we'll not write too less we'll write somewhere in between at least four to five points or three to four points i would say okay so each point okay needs to be in one paragraph this is how it goes now it's up to you whether you want to write that one point for four lines or one line or ten lines. don't write ten lines it's too much max i would say four to five four to six lines in one paragraph is the best don't make it too long don't write 10 12 10 20 lines in one paragraph trust me you don't have so much to write and you will not get time also to write so much so do not read the answers and panic start panicking oh i cannot think of so much how am i going to write so much no you don't have to write so much whatever you can think of if you have mentioned the point but in a different way maybe you have explained it much brief 
in a brief way don't worry you will get the marks okay so here take the differences basically evaluate also means pros or cons or differences basically differences in the source of finance and you have to identify by reading the case study here remember in the earlier slide i went through the seven factor to decide are you going to write seven paragraphs listing all the seven factor what are the seven factor for choosing finance can you tell me cost security gearing then what's what more control exit route cash flow i think one more i forgot what is it availability so in your exam okay if this question has asked just because you have studied the seven factor from your textbook of through my lecture are you going to write like this and then explain one paragraph for cost one paragraph for security is it the way to answer an sbl question no never no because all of this does not apply to this question the question is just asking evaluate between the two options okay so basically just check the differences between the two option one okay you need to be very careful here okay you need to have a very strong presence sense, uh, presence of mind in the question not in what you have already studied yes you can definitely take the help of what you have studied but here first you need to identify the point the, where the difference is one different is covenant covenant if you see here they have some covenant here they have an extensive covenant you see one point you have got from there i will list it down in another color maybe black color one point one point is for extensive covenant the covenant differences in the covenant first identify all the points then start writing it will be it, trust me this is the best way to write an sbl answer first write uh, make all the points like this highlight and write next to it one to however way you want to identify the point you can list down somewhere covenant okay let's say covenant is one point second point so this will tell you in first paragraph or in one paragraph you are going to write about covenant decided next out of this factor also it will help you are you going to write about cost security gearing control exit or cash flow or availability something you should be able to write on not all the seven points you are going to write equally measuring in equal length okay five lines for this five lines for no it doesn't work like that okay you can even talk about the length the length of finance because one is i think is for four years the other one is for six years here end of six year here it is last for four year so another difference is there third maybe you can say which one is more available availability fourth cost definitely cost yeah you are taking the help of this cost availability next what cash flow you can take which is giving you the good cash flow because they are telling you no know, for the year this is the cash flow this will be redeemed so cash flow remember this is a loan for loan you have to give security so you can talk about security also 
if this was equity you couldn't mention this point security very difficult because this is a loan because this is a debt you can talk about security because this is a debt you can talk about cash flow because this is a debt you can talk about cost also and also available also which debt is available which is not based on your gearing and all those things okay so here we have already talked about cost security okay under covenant we are talking about gearing only control we are not saying much because they didn't talk anything about control losing control or anything exit rows also we don't have to talk because they didn't mention anything about exit road it is mostly when venture capital is there then we talk about exit routes and all cash flow yes availability yes so almost all the points we covered at, uh, except two or three out of the seven okay now you know in any order you can write don't tell me which one should i talk about length of loan first or covenant first or cost anything in any order but at the end you have to give conclusion seventh paragraph is conclusion so this will help you even if you don't write it like this it's okay in your mind it should be there that this is your structure of your answer okay now start don't write number one number two like this don't write in bullet points also paragraphs so first let's talk about covenant okay before you start remember your first opening sentence of your paragraph should tell what are you writing about this is a skill that you need to build and you need to develop many people don't know what to write how to start first line first sentence should tell what is there in that one what, that paragraph without reading the whole paragraph so when you are starting the first paragraph let's go in this order first we are going to talk about differences in covenant okay i will write in red okay so you have to write that there appears to be differences in covenant or you can say there are differences in the covenant there are differences in the covenant this is your first line in that paragraph now you are going to build about this and explain both the side one is for the loan note the other one is for the bank loan okay so first let's start with the loan note okay i'm writing the answer for you so now you will understand how the line came sentences came now you will be able to write in your own words don't exactly copy paste word by word but follow the structure that's what i meant so whilst so let's first talk about the loan note how the covenant is for loan note and then for the bank loan okay so where's the loan notes involve some covenant is there in the paragraph right we highlighted also that they have some covenant the bank loans covenant are extensive isn't it this you have to type in your ms word not write any longer because it's on a cv platform that you are going to give this exam okay i'm not typing but i'm showing you the points covenants are extensive okay telling this is not enough why writing this part is not enough you have to write more tell me why because are you adding any value to this already is there in the paragraph no that this have extensive this is how it is having an impact this having some covenant and that having extensive covenant now that impact you have to explain this is how you answer any sbi question or any question for that matter what will this do you have to mention the name of the company all the time this will do this to the auslan this will do that to the auslan in a good or a bad way both you have to explain okay because they have a bad covenant that means they have obligations think what impact it could have think from the point of shareholder this will make your work very easy when you talk about finance think from the point of shareholder what do they want what a shareholder wants i will write here 
shareholders want dividend so what is the impact of this covenant on dividend it will increase or decrease this is what impact means increase or decrease simply this is the meaning that's it so this if you are very not if you are not sure okay you can never be sure so don't write this will this should this must write probability words like this may this perhaps probably this might you know this might this may this could use words like that this may so this may limit you can use any words you can say this may reduce okay this may limit or less you see how i'm writing the name of the company it should be there in your answer every paragraph you can go back and read the answer please i would tell you at least go through the answer and see the length of the answer how it is structured in different paragraphs so this limits oslens ability to increase dividends they cannot increase dividend no? also you can even give further points if you want to stop here stop here if you want to give further points even better remember if you are having a covenant you cannot even increase your debt if you want to take on more debt you cannot take can you no so this may limit the ability to increase dividends this may limit to raise further debt it will limit all this you cannot even raise further debt because you are talking about equity debt and others mostly equity and debt you are talking so that's why we first talked about dividend because e dividend has to do with equity and then we talked about debt can you increase it or not no or even issue new or issue new shares without the bank's approval you cannot even issue remember when you having a covenant you cannot even issue new shares if you want to have the finance you cannot even issue new shares without the permission of the bank or issue new shares without the bank's approval at the end always say give that one line this will make this one attractive or this will not make it attractive so in this case which one like you have to decide which one will be less attractive or you can say in other word this will make this one more attractive so which one is having the extensive covenant it is a bank loan bank loan no for bank loan so this would make the bank loan less attractive you see because bank loan is the one which is having that extensive covenant whoever is having the extensive covenant because for him he cannot raise dividend he cannot raise further debt he cannot even issue new shares so this would make the bank loan less attractive compared to loan notes you can say like that or less attractive for the company that is awesome. don't write for the company for the company for the company write the name of the company name of the company is given to you in the case study so this is an answer this is one paragraph you see first paragraph or uh, even go, even before jumping to this you can even write one or two line introduction also what i am going to talk about for example there are a number of differences between the sources of finance the directors of oslen should consider you can even write with that also it's better to write with one or two lines of introduction what are you writing about the directors of oslen is going to consider the different factor before choosing the source of finance like that also you can write which i didn't write here of course because i just want to go to the points second paragraph okay leave one space one space should be leave and then next paragraph you say how many lines did i write five lines because try this yourself today write more than 10 lines or at least 10 lines for one paragraph and see it's very difficult for you to you to read your own answer your eyes does not find it very attractive reading 10 lines it looks like it's very big but if you are breaking down uh, uh, three different points in 
five different paragraphs also even if the paragraphs are more but you are writing less for each paragraph you still can read the information and grasp better because that's how it works if you read any books that's the technique that writers use they always write in more paragraphs but they write less lines for each paragraph rather than writing it in one or two paragraph and writing many lines is very disturbing for your eye to grasp the information to read to read through it right that's the reason so this one point differences in covenant is explained in one paragraph like this this is how same you have to do for the other six paragraphs length of the loan availability cost cash flow security and conclusion conclusion obviously will be two or three lines that will be the shortest your introduction conclusion shortest middle part will be big that's how it goes this is the structure of your answer in sbl unless they tell you write it in a report write it in a slide presentation slide when they are quiet about it nothing has been mentioned how to write which format to write like this you have to write in paragraphs that's it So the next paragraph will be about it could be anything. Let's say availability. Okay. So since this is your first answer in SBL, okay. I'm even though it, it will take a lot of time, duration of this video will increase because I will take so much of time to write this answer. Okay. I will take that time. Because it is very much needed, I can understand. But after that, the questions which I'm going to do, I will not write a full fledged answer like this. Okay, since this is the first question, I'm going to write the answer, a full answer. Okay. But after this, because I'll be explaining in between how to write an answer, that's why it will take more time. I just can't copy paste an answer and give it to you. You have to know how that how you arrive to that answer. For the other questions in the future, you have to do the same technique you have to apply and do it. Okay. Thereafter, I'll be just giving you the points. And then you have to write your own answer. So the second point. Let's talk about any order you can write. Okay. But obviously, conclusion has to be the last paragraph. Okay. Don't tell me the other way around. Other than that, the points, the six points that I mentioned, any order you can write, any paragraph you can write. Okay. So let's talk about availability. So availability which one is more available you can always always come back and it's a good thing you have to come back because you will forget even if you have read 100 times you will forget always have to come back and revisit to get an idea okay which one do you think is more available is it the loan notes or the bank loan think bank loan no so you can talk about it i told you first line should tell you what is the point if you hear if you read here there are differences in the covenant this itself tells you this paragraph is about covenant differences in covenant that's it first line always have to tell you what is there in the paragraph i told you 
and this is not only in SBL. Okay, this I have same technique I have followed in all my other papers and inshallah I passed all the papers in the first attempt. Okay, all the papers I have followed this pattern only. So here also in terms of availability. Understand the points but you can write it in any order, any English you want to give. Please keep your English simple, short, easy to understand. Don't make it very complex and all. You are not going to get extra marks. Do not make yourself, your life difficult and also for the examiner. Write something which you can understand and which is easy to understand. So in terms of availability, the bank loan. A pace, okay? A pace. You must have heard this word a lot, a lot. A pace to be like use this the way they are using in their past paper the marking scheme you also use it that is the safest side for you because i always tell you marking scheme is like a guide line okay you have to take it as a guide it's like a compass for you it will give you a direction so go by that if you are in doubt what to use what word to use if you're confused use the word that they have used exactly that's it that is the safest way you don't try to create your own words you don't go against what is given okay because you don't you you cannot be sure whether you are right or not okay and most of you trust me i know that most of you are doing self study for sbl so go by what is given there if something is repeated if you see this pattern always try to see a pattern of an answer when something is always repeated in any answer that means the safe thing is you also do it okay i've been doing it okay i've been doing it continuously and trust me it gives a great benefit to you also okay appears to be available appears to be a definite offer from from the loan notes sorry from Auslan's bank From the bank this appears now you have to talk obviously you have to criticize the loan note so let's do that what is an issue with the loan notes see use connecting words when you have to talk about disadvantage don't write disadvantages of loan note that's not how you write right you can write the loan notes however 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 is a good word to use However, means you are trying to say something, you said something positive. After that, if you have to say something negative, you say, okay, these are the bad advantages, one, two, three. However, it has this, this, this limitations. Okay. So, however, they may not be fully subscribed. They may not be fully. You can type this answer. I'm writing it, but you can type. It's fine. See, look at this company. Loan notes we are talking about. Okay, forget about this. The company is making losses. If you see, I told you to highlight somewhere. They have been generating losses. Okay, so we have to link this with the losses. And you are taking talking about loan notes. So in this case, it's hard to take loan notes when you are making losses. Understood? You might not even fully subscribe to it also because of the losses. So will not fully subscribe if investors always talk from the point of investor okay investor if investors are wary of buying debt in a company that is making losses you see how you use the case study this is how you use the case study do you want to buy debt in a company where you are making losses so if investors are careful about it they might not fully subscribe that's what we are trying to explain through this point now so basically disadvantages all the disadvantages of loan notes you have to talk about 
talk about issue cost whenever you are taking about debt talk about issue cost now even for equity also this you can talk in any point any paragraph okay there will also be if you can think of more than one right if you can only think of one advantage or one disadvantage that is also fine write it and go to the next paragraph okay but if you can think more right i am assuming that you will not run a uh, short of time because this is just the beginning of a paragraph you mostly run short of time towards the end so in the beginning you might not think okay i am running behind time so i should not write no that usually does not happen no if you are managing your time properly remember you will never be short of time trust me you'll be able to complete and move on so there will also be higher issue cost if you are taking about issue you have to compare basically the two two forms which one will have an higher issue cost bank loan or loan notes loan notes because that is more risky so there will be high issue cost for bank for loan notes okay there will be high for loan notes which would make it less attractive again you have to say which would make it less attractive to osle you see i will uh, highlight it for you here also you told bank loan is less attractive to us here you are saying this one is less attractive to us so you are repeating you are being consistent in your answer this is how you are consistent you always be consistent like this follow this consistency this will help you you would see when there is a structure in your head you do not panic also you exactly know what to write how to start what in the middle part how to explain what to end the problem occurs when you don't know the structure you are just writing in any order it's in a haphazard way that is in that that's a problem that should not happen that's why we practice as we will answer so many times so that the structure is established and you know okay you start you end okay so this is what i'm giving you that structure once the structure is fixed you can visualize the structure also in your mind you don't have to write the structure any longer because now you have listed the six points now you know okay six paragraphs this is our start this is our end you understand it basically it makes your work easier you don't have to think so much so do not think and write rather first think take five minutes extra also think proper structure you said and then you start writing it will not take so much of time writing does not take so much of time trust me it is the thinking that takes more time so when you are writing thinking writing thinking you have to cut every time you have to cut write again cut write again that takes more time correction of an error takes more time than actually writing it for the first time trust me when i am telling you this because i am telling you this from experience right we all have experienced it and i do not want you to make that same mistake so you got to get this right at the first time okay now third paragraph difference in the length of finance option okay so third oh, sorry the highlight is on the pen okay you see even this is also four to five lines this is also four to five lines it's always like that consistency because more than that also there's nothing to explain also if you see just there are two three sentences only in each paragraph which is taking four to five lines only this is a norm sometimes okay maybe beyond six lines also it can exit but that situation is very less especially if you have numbers the ratios to explain then okay understood so the point is this first the point that then you explain there's a difference in the length of the finance option so this is the point that you are making after that you are explaining so when you are talking about the length understand what is the nature of the project why do you re require that fund is it for working capital management is it for short term you have to pay a supplier you are not having is it to for a long term this is for accusation it's given in the paragraph isn't it so this is for an accusation so make sure that you mention about accusation okay and you say what is the term for an accusation do you take it for one year no accusation is for a long term it's a long term investment so right you have to write it 
and acquisition is a long term investment. You have to talk about the term long term, short term, medium term because you talked about length. So an accusation because this is the nature accusation is the nature of the transaction for which you need finance. You have to talk about it and accusation is a long term investment. Isn't it or not? Don't go by the length four years, five years. Accusation is a long term investment. OK. See. Normally, accusation is a long term investment, but specifically if they mention some point, extra points about that accusation, mention that also in your answer. That will give you extra points. For example, here they told they are having losses and it will take them some time to turn around that business. You understanding? So when they are having losses, means you need more finance to cover that losses also during that time. One accusation, okay, when you are buying it. Second, to cover that losses also after taking accusation, you have to need more. So talk about that losses also. This is how you are utilizing the case study by taking that additional point into consideration. So particularly you have to talk about because in this scenario only. Okay, my spelling might be uh, wrong. Do not worry about it. As long as you get the concept, go ahead. So in this scenario, particularly in this scenario, where it will take a couple of years, where it would take some years. The answer said couple of years. You can write some years, few years, anything is fine. Some years for Auslan to turn which company are they acquired to turn Albiston? Mention the name of the to turn Albiston around. Okay, now what else? So they should go by the longer source of finance. So Auslan should if you see it is just not the term of finance. They should take some additional years also because you don't know how long it will take for them to turn around. So Auslan when you're recommending something you have to use words like should have must. So Auslan should okay go for long source long period or long term source of finance long term finance so in this case what is better evaluate means you are just saying which one is better comparison okay which one is better bank loan or this one bank loan is better bank loan is for 6 years loan loan is for 4 years even though the project is for 4 years loan note is also for 4 years you understand four years four years project is for four years they told bank loan note is also for four years but you have to take some additional time to turn it around okay that's six years is the bank loan so you have to go for the longer term rather than going by the exact project and the this loan term. understood so in this case bank loan is better so bank loan okay is for six years hence it is better for this purpose or it would be better for this purpose would you see here also is four to five lines here also you are saying okay it makes or you can even say it makes bank loan more attractive you can write like that also it's fine so three points i've covered in three points already now what cost let's talk about cost which one is cheaper for cheaper you have to go and see this is seven percent effective fixed rate bank loan is eight percent variable rate which one is cheaper tell me 
fixed rate or the variable rate of 8 percent the bank so loan note is cheaper okay loan note is cheaper So here let's talk about that when you're talking about it remember the seven in eight percent when numbers are given cost is given when you're talking in terms of finance number you have to mention the number in your answer so is it is it very difficult what you thought about sbl that is very difficult to write sbl answers and all i don't think it's very easy right uh, so, sorry it's very difficult at least not now since i've explained you the concept how to start an answer i think the next paragraph you can do it or should i i don't think i have to write it any longer i will just write the point the cost now you can write i will tell you the points okay so in terms of cost you can talk about the cost for the loan note okay you can you can start by saying loan notes cheaper compared to bank loan because loan node has annual cost of 7% bank loan has 8% okay that is not enough now talk what if interest rate changes impact it will have an impact right so if the interest rate fall in the future bank loan becomes more attractive because it's a variable cost no see loan node is fixed I will explain you through diagrams I'm not writing an answer otherwise it will take so long now you'll be able to write the points here after onwards already three paragraphs three points i've explained to you next you can write loan notes is seven percent fixed bank loan i'm explaining you graphically visually you write it eight percent variable so in future if interest rate falls down that means let's say five percent they will pay five percent but they will still pay seven percent so who is at a advantage bank loan bank loan becomes more attractive that time okay so you have to take care of that also what will happen to the future interest rate also has to take that into consideration if interest rate expected to fall bank loan otherwise loan notes okay now next point is cash flow so you can say that in terms of cash flow which one is preferable loan node or bank loan come up okay two percent coupon loan notes here it is interest would be payable half yearly in area so in the short term it is a loan note in terms of cash flow loan note is more preferable compared to cash flow compared to the bank loan right because the coupon if you see for the loan note is just two percent is very small it's much smaller and if you see most of it 30 percent like you are taking at premium the re redemption is at premium right most of it the cash flow will be here most of the cash outflow is at the redemption time when you're actually paying the loan note which is also at premium but it does not arise for four years at the fourth year you are paying at least for the first four years you for first four years it's not an outflow right and also take care of the losses also they are making losses also as Elveston is making losses, okay. Do you think this is preferable? You, it is better to delay the debt repayments because they are making, having losses, and interest also for long as possible. Try to delay, pull it this side. So in this case, okay, bank loan is less attractive. Why? because if you see bank loan interest has to be made six months every six months you have to make interest payment you cannot delay here you understanding so 
it will put an added pressure on cash flow that means cash outflow will happen every six months you cannot delay but in loan note two percent is very small every year and 30 percent that you are paying at premium is at the fourth year that means you can delay till four year the payment so loan note is more attractive in this case coming to the last security last paragraph before the conclusion security okay what do you think there's a difference in that also go to the loan note tell me which assets will be secured for loan note see the loan note would require a fixed and a floating charge over the assets of this it requires security on both the asset both of these assets so you have to write this in your answer but bank loan will only take on alveston's assets over the assets of alveston so if accusation fails what happens tell me if accusation fails what happen see there are losses that are there in albiston right so if the accusation fails given the losses then the bank loan would not have to make any further capital injections with the bank loan you don't have to make any further capital injections for the bank loan because it's only for albiston it's very possible that accusation will fail possibility is high because they are making losses albiston is making losses so if it fails with the bank loan you don't have to make any further capital injections because you are making losses and your assets are secured on Alveston over the assets of Alveston how can you secure it any longer you cannot pay any longer right now everything has been discussed if you have more points to it please go ahead and write make sure it is checked by someone else if you are writing less points than this don't worry your job is not to write all the points your job is to write maximum points out of this so at least out of seven if you are able sorry out of six at least three or four points also you wrote you did a very good job okay now let's do conclusion that is the must because you have to keep it short and specific also to what you have discussed so overall when you're writing conclusion you can write overall what's the impact you can say that overall there are a lot of factor that both should take into account so overall what do you think when you have to say overall decide under how many factors bank loan was less attractive if it was four or five points that says bank loan is less attractive means the option is loan note if it's draw if it's equal okay then it's up to you you can go in any order but usually it will not be a draw you will be having one advantage more or less for one of these factors bank loan or loan notes okay so in this case bank loan appears to be less risky okay i will write the overall bank loan less risky in this condition bank loan has longer period which is six year compared to four years you have to write this in conclusion okay therefore bank loan appears to be more attractive source of finance right like this one you have to point you can even write loan note also it's up to you if you can justify it but you have then you have to give advantages of bank loan okay you might say they are less costly or you might say uh, based on security based on availability based on cash flow loan note is better so anything like that you can write in a conclusion see there is no right or wrong answer if you write, choose loan note also in this answer Imagine some of you might say loan note is the best. Still, you will get full marks. Don't worry. There is no right and wrong answer in this bill. You will get the answer. You will get full points because I have discussed all the factors. So based on that, you can give your conclusion. For conclusion and all, they will not cut so much of marks. Don't worry. It is only the points. Are you able to identify the points or not for which you are getting maximum marks? 
through try to work on the points then your conclusion so much okay conclusion could be in any direction that's okay now let us go to the decision making techniques enough with funding strategy okay another thing before i jump to the decision making techniques i forgot about the professional skill marks commercial acumen i told you see this if you see it is in the last paragraph which i didn't write in the answer it is in the security it is in the last paragraph where you have showed this how or uh, not even there also you can write overall in the conclusion sometimes you can show it your commercial acumen in conclusion also how by stating that you have to take various considerations into factor before deciding a source of finance that itself is showing that you have a commercial acumen that you are just not choosing based on one factor cost or let's say availability no okay so now let's go to the decision making technique so under decision making techniques we are going to go through some uh, what do i say some techniques okay where we are going to have calculations and you must have covered this from your management accounting or your financial accounting from your previous paper okay but even if you forgot do not worry because uh, i'm going to provide you with the formulas so you just basically need to memorize the formulas since it will not be given in your exam formula sheet because for your sbl this other assumed knowledge that means you should know this when you come to sbl but even if you forgot it's okay you can always go back and revisit okay and we are definitely going to do questions on this the first is contribution to sales ratios and break even point okay so the first that we are going to study is cost volume profit analysis that is known as cvp under this okay cv analysis makes use of the contribution concept to understand cvp you should know what is contribution what is contribution if i ask you in simple terms c contribution means you deduct all your variable cost or your marginal cost from your sales that is the meaning of contribution you do not take into account the fixed cost and all that is the meaning of contribution concept okay and if you have to assess a single product these are the things you need one contribution to sales ratio break even point margin of safety these are the three areas that you need to work on okay and for all these three you need the contribution you need the contribution concept so contribution is selling price less all variable cost now first we are going to go through this the cs, uh, CS ratio break even point and margin of safety cs ratio means it is the proportion of your selling price that contributes to fixed overheads and profit it is comparable to the gross profit margin you do not have to memorize this for uh, definitions and all you just need to know the formula so formula to for calculating cs ratio is this it is either contribution per unit divided by selling price per unit or total contribution divided by total sales revenue now you need to understand whether they are asking per unit or the total if they are asking total both up and down needs to be total if they are asking per unit both up and down needs to be per unit okay that cs ratio is sometimes referred to as profit volume ratio pv ratio so do not get confused in the exam if they ask pv ratio or cs ratio they are the same thing okay now break even point second is break even point after cs ratio okay because you can make decision based on break even point also cs ratio also first one was cs ratio which we covered second is break even point break even point means a position where you are not making a profit or a loss also profit is equals to loss okay and break even point occurs when your total sales revenue that means total cost is equals to total sales revenue that means profit is zero no profit you are neither making a profit neither making a loss or your total contribution is equal to your fixed cost still your profit is zero this is the following formula that you need to calculate the break even point there are two things for break even one 
are they asking you in terms of revenue or in terms of unit sold if it is break even point in terms of unit sold this is the formula fixed cost divided by contribution per unit for unit contribution per unit you memorize it like this if they are asking in terms of number of units sold then it is contribution per unit fixed cost divided by contribution per unit if they are asking in terms of sales revenue then it is a cs ratio not per unit so just remember unit for unit sales revenue is the cs ratio fixed cost fixed cost will be fixed okay i mean uh, it will be on the top only the bottom the denominator changes that's it so you have to see in the question are they asking break even point in terms of sales revenue or in terms of number of units sold if number of units sold contribution per unit if sales revenue cs ratio okay now third margin of safety margin of safety is what margin of safety means see there will be some margin that means you can still afford to lose some sales you will still not make a loss there's some buffer some margin is there okay but beyond that if you fall then you are going to make a loss so you have to understand what is that margin of safety what is that buffer that you can have before you start making loss this also you can calculate it in two ways percentage of sales or number of units okay so this is the formula you need to memorize all these formulas by the way in sbl when you come all the formulas all the ratios accounting ratios you have to know with the formula okay so if they are asking in terms of units okay it is just budgeted sales minus break even sales remember if units just dif difference between budgeted sale and break even sale why break even sale because break even sale is the point when your profit is zero and budgeted sale will be obviously more than that zero so that difference you want to know that is the buffer system beyond zero if you fall it's a loss you understanding i don't know whether you can visualize it or not but anyway we'll do a question so don't worry if it's in terms of percentage then you know how do you calculate percentage change the difference divided by the old figure that means budgeted sales minus break even sales divided by budgeted sales once you start dividing it by budgeted sales and multiply by 100 that's when you are finding it in terms of percentage remember to find it in terms of percentage you need to divide it the difference needs to be divided if you are not dividing just the difference then is the number of units the margin of safety so this is what you need to remember now we are going to do a question on break even point so let's do that break even sales question so test understanding 3 you have been given sales variable fix and net profit okay due to a downturn in market condition the company is worried that next year they may result in losses and would like to know the change in sales that would make this happen okay and this is for 5 marks calculate the break even sales revenue for the business based on its current cost structure use this information to determine the percentage fall in sales that would be necessary before the company would begin to incur losses so you start with your break even sales revenue okay can we directly start break even sales revenue can we remember when it is in terms of sales revenue or whether it is for units because i told unit is for unit that means if it's unit you need contribution per unit if it's total sales revenue you need what you need cs ratio this is a good question because this will test your knowledge how well you remember the formula I'll just check whether the break even is in terms of sales revenue or number of units sold. What are they asking? This is sales revenue. Sales revenue means you need to know CS ratio and fixed cost. Fixed cost is already given. You don't have to worry, but this you have to work out to get the break even point in terms of revenue. Why? Write the formula. Write the formula. In the exam, you don't have to write, but break even point. in terms of sales revenue is equal to fixed cost 
divide by cs ratio if this was in terms of units then it will be contribution per unit so you need to find the cs ratio first what is the formula for cs ratio now total contribution i told you cs ratio it is not uh, contribution per unit it is total because cs ratio so total contribution cs ratio means first is c then it is sales this is how you memorize it so total contribution first is c then it is sales total sales revenue total total both needs to be total total it cannot be one is total the other one is per unit never make that mistake so total contribution is how much to get that total contribution go up contribution means sales minus fixed variable cost so 450 minus 220 forget about very fixed cost 450 minus 220 divided by 450 how much 51.1 percent or you can say in terms of decimal if you want to say 0 0.511 now break even point now you can put this here and get it what is your fixed cost fixed cost is 160 thousand it is in thousands remember so 160,000 divided by 0 0.511 it will be how much 313,000 write the dollar sign because it is in terms of sales revenue understanding see the question did ask you to exactly calculate margin of safety the question asked you to determine the percentage fall in sales before they make loss in short indirectly they are asking you margin of safety you need to understand but first to calculate margin of safety you need break even point without that you cannot calculate margin of safety now you can calculate margin of safety because we know the break even position understanding so margin of safety mos is equals to what they are asking in terms of percentage so it will be budget at sales minus break even sales divide by budget at sales i told you in terms of percentage you need to divide multiply by 100 so sale was 450 break even just now we got 313,000 but you cannot write 313,000 drop down the three zeros and write 313 if you want to write 313,000 you have to write 450,000 remember but do not waste so much of time to write so much it's easier to type 450 and 313 rather than adding the three zeros for both minus 450 divide by 450 sorry which will be equal to 30.44 percent or you can say 30 percent if you want to round it up to the whole number explain what does it mean that means your sales need to fall by 30 percent before you can make a loss okay if your sale fall more than 30 percent in the next year you are going to make a loss you are going to be in the loss making situation this is your margin of safety at up to 30 percent less than 30 percent you can your sales can drop down if it exist this let's say sales drop down by 31 percent you are going in the loss making position okay so now let us go through the limitations of the break-even analysis why all this we did through break-even only identifying the loss in sales and all but there are some limitation also of that break-even analysis let's go through that limitations of break even analysis number one it is for the short term number two it assumes that your contribution per unit will be constant but does it no over the long period of time or medium term it keeps changing third selling price is constant fourth variable cost and fixed cost you know it they are constant but no it ignores the stepped fixed cost sometimes after a certain point of time you must have seen this in rent or any other things fixed cost changes it increases after a certain point of time that's why it is known as stepped fixed cost but break-even analysis ignores it they assume fixed cost will be constant forever variable cost per unit is constant forever 
then they assume sale is equals to production that means there is no stock movement sometimes what do you produce you, you might not sell it you might be having something in the stock but they do not assume it they assume whatever you produce you are sold objective is to maximize profit but shareholders might have other objective also which break even analysis do not take into consideration now we are moving on to marginal analysis from break even analysis the second decision making technique okay marginal the word marginal means we are only taking contribution into account to make decisions okay so the key is that only cost okay for marginal decision means what you have to remember is only the cost that changes with your decision will be included in this analysis if the cost remains the same whether you take the decision or not it is an irrelevant cost we'll do questions don't worry relevant cost principle what are the relevant cost cash flow number one cash flow when you're taking a decision you do not take decision based on profit on cash flow remember actual cash flow so any non cash flow items like depreciation or interdivisional charges that you have done it while calculating profit you ignore it you add back your depreciation back now because you deduct a depreciation while calculating profit but depreciation is a non cash item so you add it back you eliminate ignore second future cost and revenue or you can say incremental cost anything that changes with your decision will are relevant but if there are any cost or revenue that is in the past okay that means you cannot recover it back it has already happened there are another term is known as sunk cost cost already spent like on your research and development you have spent that is sunk cost you cannot recover it back so it is irrelevant it is not important for your decision making ignore it why am i telling you you have to know those costs which you have to ignore you have to know those costs which you have to take because in the exam they will give you all, both the types of cost and sometimes not sometimes majority of the time students often do this mistake they take all the cost and calculate no you have to ignore some cost you have to know those cost not all the cost are relevant cost okay then third type of cost that is relevant is differential that means because of your decision it is changing otherwise cost and those revenue will remain same okay some cost and revenue they are common for everything whatever the alternatives you take it's common ignore those cost only the differences are relevant okay so marginal analysis can be used in key areas of decision making such as what number 1 to accept or reject any order second to close or discontinue so sorry or continue let's say you want to close down a subsidiary or close down a division based on loss making or you are in confused whether to close or continue that time marginal analysis will help you so remember marginal analysis is helpful in these two areas okay and this two areas has been asked in spl question in the past whether to accept or offer reject an offer they might give you alternative decisions to take based on various models now first let's start with accepting and rejecting orders okay basic decision rule is this if your extra revenue that you are receiving is less than your marginal cost okay extra revenue received less marginal cost on meeting that special contract you have to calculate this before deciding what is your extra revenue less your extra marginal cost of meeting that special order what does it mean it means fixed cost contracted cost are ignored in this decision come into the closure or continuation here you might sell off part of the department or a product if it's unprofitable okay so business might have to make their decision whether to shut that area or continue why remember even if it is making profit sorry making losses for the short term sometimes having that is very essential for your business they your entire other parts of the business or it might give profit in the long term so you have to make a careful decision not just on the profit but also on the other areas coming to benefit and the losses of closing these are the financial benefit okay 
that's why the term is quantifiable you can quantify you can give a quantity to this there are some which are non-financial cost and benefit that is more difficult actually but first let's go through this quantifiable cost or benefit of closure for example when you're closing something can calculate what is your con lost contribution because you are going to lose no if you're going to close down that contribution that you're receiving from that you're going to lose it so what is that loss contribution this is a uh, relevant cost of closure that means relevant cost second what are the savings that you're having in the fixed costs because you are closing that is a benefit third any penalties or any cost that are there from the closure like redundancy or you have to pay compensation to your customer it's a cost reorganization cost is a cost any additional contribution that you can get from the alternative use of that resource it's a benefit okay now what are the qualitative factors to make or buy sometimes you might make it in-house sometimes you might buy the product from elsewhere what are the qualitative factor number one you have to see the reliability of the external supplier if you're trying to buy especially you just cannot buy from anyone you have to see whether the supplier is reliable or not how can you check that in terms of quantity that they are giving you in terms of quality that they are going to provide you in terms of delivering on time are they are price stable or not based on these four conditions you are going to decide whether they are reliable or not second point specialist skills if you are planning to buy it do they have specialist skills most of the time they do have which is not available in in-house alternative use of resource sometimes outsourcing some resource can help you to free up to use another part of the business well fourth social if you're outsourcing will it result in reduction of your workforce because you have to pay redundancy cost also to them legal what are the legal issues do you will it affect your contractual obligation with supplier or employees if you're outsourcing confidentiality if you want to buy it from your external supplier there are so many secrets that you have to give them you have to leak to them so will there be any risk of loss of confidentiality especially if you are taking on an external supplier and they also work for tribal companies then it's an issue customer reaction do customers attach important to the products that are made in-house sometimes customers do not want you to buy it from elsewhere they want you to make that in-house maybe it's unique customized no one else makes it maybe customer value it so much so you have to see that reaction from the customer also in your exam when you have to give pros evaluate a decision remember you have to give both financial and non-financial factor both i cannot tell you give five point five financial and five non-financial it does not work that way it's up to you use your own judgment whether you want to give three financial five non-financial is up to you but both needs to be given even though the question is finance financial decisions you have to give non-financial factor to take a decision financial decision also remember that now let's do a small question test your understanding for so in this question you have a decision whether to outsource or internally provide the service okay that is accounting service you have been given some cost for internal service as well as the external service now you have to determine the cost effectiveness of outsourcing and accounting activities and identify the quality factors okay whenever you have to talk about qualitative and financial factor or quantitative start with quantitative factor because that is the easiest okay so let's first start with the internal service department what are the cost remember when you are taking the cost only the relevant cost so purchasing hardware software relevant hardware software maintenance relevant accounting stationery relevant part-time uh, accounts clock all these are relevant so add up all it will be equal to 7570 this is the cost coming to the external remember they have been given as 0.5 per document 0.5 per check 2 per supplier per month okay 
So here when you're taking, okay, how are you doing it? This needs to be multiplied with this. This needs to be multiplied with this. This needs to be multiplied with this. So 5,000 into 0 0.5, 2,500. 0 0.5 into 4,000, 2,000. 2 into 150. 2 into 150. But remember, here it is per supply per month. So you also have to multiply this by 12. 2 into 150 into 12, which will be 3600. And if you add all the three, it will equal to 8100. In terms of finance cost, you are going to go by internal service department because this is less costly. Now we are going to go by the qualitative factor. What are they? It's up to you. Give two points, three points, four points. Okay. Qualitative factors could be the volume. Number one. If you have higher volume, it will make outsourcing more expensive. Remember, because you have to huge amount of volume you have to outsource, it will make it very expensive. Number two. Quality of supply. If you are depending, if you are focusing on the quality, you have to also take care whether your external supplier will make more error or not. Third, confidentiality, or you can say security of information. If you're outsourcing, will it be secure? So these are the three quality factor you need to talk about. They just told identify the quality factor. Just identify, that's enough. Now, let us go to the reporting, financial reporting and tax implications of this decision-making techniques. The final financial reporting implications, okay? Cash versus profit. You first need to understand there are two ways that your financial statements could be prepared. One is accrual basis, one is cash basis. You must have heard about it. Accrual basis means when you have incurred the revenue or incurred the cost even if you have not received the cash or pay the cash cash basis is easier it depends on when you have received that cash for the sales and when you have paid the cash so cash basis right but most of the time if you have seen financial statements are prepared on a cruel basis right but there are differences between cash and profit cash and profit are not the same thing and why this differences you need to understand number one Okay, some items of cash receipts and payment do not affect the profit at all. Do not. For example, you might earn a huge profit. Okay, but you spend large sum on capital expenditure to buy a new building for a new investment. So it will not affect your profit, but it's a negative cash outflow. Second, profits are often accounting calculations. They are based on like on the paper, you do the calculation. For example, depreciation, you deduct before you get the profit, right? But they do not affect your cash flow. Does depreciation affect your cash flow? No. It's just an accounting device for spreading the cost of non-current asset over the life of the asset. It's just an accounting measure, nothing to do with cash. Third, cash flow is affected by the need to invest in operational working capital. For example, if you have to invest in working capital, you want to buy inventory, you want to pay your data, your creditors are paying you. It will affect your cash flow, but it has nothing to do with your profit. Okay. So here, profit will differ to your cash flow. Now, if profit is impacted by decisions, then it is that the shareholders may focus on. Okay, on top of this, if profit is affected, then other financial reporting measures may be impacted. Remember, if profit is affected, even your other financial reporting measures will be affected, such as EPS, earnings per share. You don't have to know detail of all those things in SBL, okay? They will not ask detail, maybe four or five marks. Price earning ratio, your interest cover, and your gearing ratio. For example, if your EPS, if you see your share price is going down or your interest cover is low, what do you do? Shareholders sell their shares. So that's a decision that they are making, right? 
because it is impacted they are making a decision to sell the shares so that's how it is having an impact you understanding or you might even close a business or discontinue it and if you plan to close a business unit you have to disclose it separately in your financial statements as a discontinued activity remember that tax implication is the next okay when you are making the decision okay the whatever the decision is whether you close whether you continue it will have a tax implication sometimes you decide to open a factory in another company country there the tax rate might be different so it might move for example you might move from a high high tax to low tax country or low tax to high tax country second you might either get the tax relief or you might lose the tax relief depends on the tax rates differences in the tax rate third timing of the taxation payment okay sometimes you can change the decision and save the tax tax planning it is called tax plan then last taxation is based on profits rather than cash flow there will be timing differences that means more tax is paid earlier than later okay so because of this this will have an impact on the shareholders attitude also okay and hence shareholders wealth now long term decision making if you have to make a decision for long term there are four techniques four methods that you can use and most and all these four are taught in financial management it is explained you don't have to know detail okay if you want to know detail you can attend my afm classes afm lectures are there but you don't need it for sbl briefly knowing as enough the way if you know how to calculate more than enough if you know one advantage one disadvantage more than enough for all these four methods this are taken for long term decision making uh, number one net present value how do you calculate here you have some discount factor or you can say cost of capital and you discount your future cash flow and get the present value benefit is it is best to use okay when you best use this see in your question in the scenario that will be given to you in the exam you have to decide which method is more suitable how do you do it you have to see whether the project is long or not you have to see whether the cost of capital is known or not if both are there project is long cost of capital is known close your eyes and use net present value advantage it gives a um, increase like having a positive net present value means it will increase your shareholders wealth that's what you want disadvantage is cost of capital is just an estimate it might not be accurate because you are just relying on that cost of capital and that itself is based on based on so many assumptions right coming to the next method payback period this means you calculate how fast you are going to recover the cash that you have injected right best use when the project is short it will not happen for 10 20 years you cannot calculate payback period not possible advantage is this provides a minimum target for project life okay that means because the short period the the project is for short period okay you can have a target that you want your project life to be this much it just gives you a target that your project should be for 2 years or 3 years or within 2 years you should recover your cash like that at disadvantage is it requires a target or a benchmark you cannot decide which project to take you have to have a benchmark that if a project is uh, giving me cash giving back my cash in less than 2 years i am going to accept that project but if you don't have that benchmark don't have that target very difficult to make a decision third method is arr accounting rate of return how do you calculate you divide your profit by initial investment best use when the project has a profit targets to meet so you see this is based on profit rather than cash flow this is the only method that is based on profit than the target the other three are on cash flow so project has profit targets to meet advantages is it is very simple calculation you already have the available information profit is av easily available initial investment is easily available disadvantages is profits unlike cash can be easily manipulated i told you profits are accounting measure you do so many adjustments with profit with cash you cannot do that there are strong evidences whether you have received a cash or you have paid a cash but for profit 
there is no such evidence so you can easily manipulate fourth is irr that is internal rate of return how do you calculate you determine a cost of capital that provides a zero net present value you have to do an interpolation and all those things you have to know all those methods okay best use when the project is long and the cost of capital is not yet known you have to calculate right advantage highest acceptable cost of capital tells us the highest that means what is your cost of capital that you can accept highest disadvantages is if you have to compare projects you cannot use irr because sometimes some projects gives you multiple irr we know that right because you might have a positive cash flow then negative then positive those are limitations of irr so you cannot compare projects now we are moving on to focusing on problems when you are basing your decision only on financial returns number one sometimes your non-financial factors might be more it might outweigh the benefits or cost might outweigh the financial benefits or cost second if you are only basing your decisions on financial returns remember managers can easily manipulate those areas non-financial managers cannot manipulate third cost may be removed from the focus sometimes you might remove the cost only so that you can overstate the benefit fourth managers may include slack in their forecast to show that they have enough profit uh, so enough benefit projects with no financial benefits would automatically be rejected which is not the correct way sometimes you might have non financial or long term benefits are there maybe in the short term yes financial cost are there but benefits might be there now we are moving on to our last section of this lecture that is risk and uncertainty in decision making see we went through all we started with how to fund if you want to acquire or make a decision funding strategy then we went through the decision making techniques for long term medium term sources of finance then we went through the implications on the financial reporting tax implication finally we are ending with the risk and uncertainty because there are risk also in that decision making that is you are doing it in the future no you are making a decision for the future but sitting today how will you know what will happen in 5 years time it's very risk uncertainty is there right you have to put this also in your model before you make a decision that there will be some risk there will be something that will go against your planning okay understand the definition first what is risk and uncertainty they are not the same thing risk it is something you can put a value to it quantifiable it is based on probability you can say that the risk of this not happening is this much for example the risk of not raining tomorrow there is a risk that it might rain 60% or there is a risk that it might not rain 40% chances it is something that must have happened in the past based on that you are putting some kind of probability okay uncertainty on the other hand is unquantifiable you don't know it could go in any direction you can either get it either you can't get it for example you are digging an oil okay in some area which you don't know you don't know what is the possibility of you getting that oil or not you cannot even give probability also to that so that is uncertainty okay how do you manage uncertainty we are going to deal two things how to manage risk how to manage uncertainty okay first we'll go through uncertainty how to manage uncertainty uncertainty could be managed through various ways one is scenario planning you create scenario worst case best case most likely and see what would be the outcome this could easily be done in excel nowadays what if analysis is there right now next you diversify your investment so that you are not very uncertain if you are very uncertain of something happening a positive you diversify so that the positive from one market the negative from another market nets off each other and your overall uncertainty is the impact of or the negative impact of overall uncertainty is reduced understanding it nets off against each other third environmental environmental testing you do market research the more you research the more certain you become okay now we are moving to managing risk 
our main area is on managing risk for your SBL exam. You have we have a whole separate section on risk. Remember, section D was risk management. How do you manage that risk now? You know you can give probability to risk, okay, and expected value. What is expected value? See, expected value do not get confused. Expected value is not the most likely result. It is not even the most possible result. Also, it is just an average of average outcome that will happen. If the same event happens many times, frequently it keeps happening. So that means there are some limitations of this also expected value. If the event happens one time, you cannot put a probability to it. You cannot calculate expected value for an event like that. You can only uh, calculate expected value for an event which keeps happening, like throwing a dice, throwing a coin, flipping a coin. This keeps happening, no? Thousand times, twenty times you can do. So expected value you can calculate. Now go through this. Through this you will understand expected value. This one question is enough. I don't have to do ten to twenty questions and waste your time. Formula of expected value is your probability multiply your multiply by your expected outcome. It could be anything, profit, monthly profit, monthly cash, or anything. But probability will be there. So probability into your expected output. So here, if you see in this example, your monthly profit is ten thousand. Probability is zero point seven. That means seventy percent. Monthly profit of happening twenty percent is thirty percent probability. So how do you calculate the expected value? Just multiply ten thousand by zero point seven, twenty thousand by zero point three, add both, which is thirteen thousand. This is the expected profit. Okay, this is how you calculate expected value. Very simple. Now, what are the advantages of expected value? It takes account by considering probability of each possible outcome. Second, information is reduced to a single number. Expected value is just one number. So that means your decision making becomes easier. Third, calculations are very easy. Fourth, sorry, the next is disadvantages. Disadvantages are the probabilities itself are very subjective. How can you be very sure that this has a seventy percent, this has a thirty percent of occurring? It could be wrong also, no. Second, they are just weighted average. It does not have so much of meaning. If it's for one of project, as I told you earlier, it has a very little meaning or no meaning at all. Third, it gives. Expected value gives no indication of dispersion of possible outcomes. That means how spread your risk is. What are the possible range of outcomes that could occur? Expected value will not give you that range. Only one outcome. Now, they may not correspond to any of the actual possible outcomes. Whatever the outcomes is there, expected value might not have, will not correspond any of it. There are chances. So now. The next first one, how do you manage risk? Is expected value. There is there is a second way of managing risk when you want to take a decision, whatever the decision is. That is known as decision trees. Okay, in the exam, don't worry, you will not be expected to draw a decision tree. But at least, if a decision tree is given to you, you should be able to interpret the decision tree. Because at this level, they will not tell you, okay, draw the decision tree, then take no. They will not ask you, but at least you should know how to interpret the decision tree. For that, we are doing a question. After this, there is a question on decision tree. Decision tree and multi-stage decision problems. Why multi-stage? Decision tree does not happen at one stage. Multiple stages are there. There are layers of it. It's like a tree. Why decision tree? Because it's like a tree. Branches are coming out. Branches are there. Branches after branches. Branches after branches. You will see. I will show you visually how it looks like. So decision tree is a diagramic representation of a decision problem. You have a problem. You have various uh, courses of action that you can take. Decision tree will show you in a dramatic uh, di uh, diagramatic way. Okay. Next. Next thing that you should know about decision tree is it involves a series of decision being made, not just one decision. third it follows a order there is a logical sequence of event if this ha event happen that will happen okay so decision tree will force the decision maker to consider that then the financial outcomes 
and the probabilities you need probabilities here also you need outcomes here also so outcomes and probabilities are shown separately okay and when you have to see what is the expected value you go back decision tree is rolled back by calculating expected value here also you have to calculate expected value but in a decision tree in a diagrammatic way and then make a decision and all the cost relevant cost and revenue are considered all the relevant cost and all the cash is expressed in present value terms you don't have to worry about discounting and all those things they will give you they will give you only in present value don't worry but they will be giving you it in present value now let's draw a diagram a decision tree let's do a question where we have to draw a decision tree and then interpret that means take a decision what is the best route to take so let's do that So now with the understanding of decision tree, we are going to solve this question. Okay. A company is planning and drilling for oil. It can either drill immediately at a cost of 50 or carry out some test at a cost of 10. Alternatively, the company could sell the rights to the site to another company for 40. Okay. So the first paragraph tells us that there are three things that the company can do. A, they can drill immediately. B, they can do some test. C, they can sell the right. And the cost has been given. Okay. Then, if it decides to drill now, see, this is called condition probability. Some condition needs to be satisfied first before the second event could take place. So, if you decide to drill now, there is a 55% chance that it will find oil and extract with a value of 150. So, that value of 150 is the cash flow. Okay. Then, if further tests are carried out, there is 70% chance that they will indicate the presence of oil. The sales right is worth 65. The company could, alternatively, the company could drill for oil itself at a cost of 50. Then there is an 80% chance oil, oil extraction worth this much. If further tests are carried out and indicate that no oil is present, the value of the sales right would fall to 15. The company would still drill if the com sorry the company could still decide to drill for oil itself. Then there is only 20% chance that this would be successful. Can you understand anything? Can you make a decision based on this if we do not present it in a decision tree? No. So first, how do you understand? Understand the logic sequential order. Sequence is very important in decision tree. Which event is happening first, which is happening the second. So the first is it is given in this order. You have to follow the order that the event is given. Okay. The order of the event is very important. So now let's start. Okay. Now. How do you approach this question? If you are not able to get the whole decision tree, don't worry. We are going to break down the branches and go there. At least the first branch you should understand. Out of first, there should be three branches. Three decisions that you have, can take for the first time. Okay, so I will do it like this. Uh, maybe I will go a little down. Okay, I will do it this side. This. 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 Three things that you can do. What is the first one? You could either test, sell rights, or you can drill now. The cost is given, put the cost in bracket. If you test, it is from the first paragraph, 10 million, 10, 50, and 40 million are the cost. If you sell rights, it's an inflow. So 40 has to be without bracket. Okay. So when you test, the cost will be how much? Ten. It will be ten million. I'll just write ten. If you sell rights, remember it's an inflow. So it's a forty. And when you drill now, the cost is fifty million fifty. Okay. Now 
will go one by one okay if you if the the next paragraph so we'll go paragraph by paragraph first paragraph second paragraph third paragraph fourth paragraph first paragraph is over second paragraph says if you decide to drill now there's a 50 percent chance that you will find the oil with the value of 150 so let's go to the branch where it says drill now okay and from there you can open two they told 55 percent chance you will find oil 150 is the value then what is the chance of you not finding the oil the balance 45 percent 45 percent you will know oil okay there will be a circle here okay i will tell you why later especially when you have to go to the second branch after the first branch gets over you have to put a circle okay that's how it works now second paragraph is over third paragraph if you decide to do the test then there is a 70 percent chance that there will be presence of oil that means 30 percent no oil okay so now we'll do that go here if you test further oil there will be oil no oil 70 percent 30 percent no oil okay so if there is oil and there is no oil we can still extend that branch more from the test okay what it says okay see if there is a presence of oil okay the sales right would be worth 65 million okay or they could drill for oil itself at a cost of 50 if they get the oil then they can drill the oil for itself at a cost of 50 or the sales right would be worth 65 million are you able to follow are you able to follow there is then 80 percent then then means it's in the next branch okay first finish the seven uh, 65 million and 50 million so after oil if there is an oil then again okay drill for yourself at 50 sell rights at 65 okay now what when you drill also there is further what did they say that when you drill for yourself at a cost of 50 there is then an 80 percent chance that oil extraction worth is successful that means 20 percent it will not be successful so this comes from this when you drill zero that means 80 percent chance of happening 20 percent chance of not happening fine oil at 150 no oil okay so that part is over now if there is no oil here we need to go back that is in the last paragraph this paragraph is over if further tasks are carried out and indicate no oil is present 
then sales ride will be 15. Company could still decide to deliver oil for itself at a 20% chance. That means it's from here. Second branch on boats, no oil. Okay. Then at 50 million or 50, you are going to drill. Okay. See, they didn't say anything about drilling. Drilling will be 50. They only told sale rise will fall. Here it is 65. If oil is there, if oil is not there, it will fall down to 15. So sales right is 15. Then if they drill, there is 20% chance of getting oil. Oil, 150 will be the value. Same only, same as this one. Then no oil. So your decision tree is complete. Now that's not enough. That's not enough. What do you do? Tell me. You need to find what? What do you want? Expected value. How do you get the expected value? Tell me. You need to get the expected value. See, when you're working out the expected value, you work backwards. How did you how did you draw the tree diagram? You started left to right. When you're finding the expected value, it is said in the lecture before in the slides, you go backwards. You go right to left. That's how you find the expected value. Here you have to get that value. Okay, so let's do that. I've left some space also. Here is that space that you need. Okay, so when you find the expected value, how do you do that? How do you do that? You just simply multiply this 80% by 150. 150 by 80%. So I will do it here. 150 into 80% will give you 120. Okay, so here. It's 120. Okay. You are working from this. I will, I don't know, this side. Like this. Not from no oil. This, like this, you're not working. Okay. Because the value is not given when it's no oil. So you cannot work also. No figure is given. They just told no oil. So you cannot multiply 0 by 20%. You can only work out with where you have a value. Okay. So just deduct 120 by 50. You see the cost here is 50 to drill. So 120. So 120 minus 50 will give you 70. So here, it is here. There's a box here. Which says it's 70. Okay. Then what happens? Then what happens? You, ca you cannot work further because to work here you need to work from the uh, this side see to get the point here okay this value here you just cannot take 70 percent of 70 okay okay if you are taking it also it will be 49 but you have to work from this lower branch also like this because there's a value here. 
before that you have to know what is this there is a there's a there will be a square here you have to know what is this value first so you have to work from again you have to work like this because downside you need this is one this is two you need the second branch also to get this value here so we'll work again backwards maybe i will use a different color so that you do not get confused okay here when you find oil 150 into 20 percent so 150 into 20 percent is how much is 30 right it's 30 isn't it there will be a bracket here so this is 30 then what else do you need that is 30 okay this is minus 50 how do you get this here this one see here if you go where is it 30 okay 30 minus 50 it will be negative 20 it cannot be negative amount it has to be a positive figure okay so you take this one 15 okay because 30 minus 50 it will be minus 20 we don't take minus figure so we take the bigger figure which is 15 here so this will be 15 so now you see 15 so 15 into 30 percent okay 15 into 30 percent which will be 4.5 so you add both it will be 53.5 so in this box it will be 53.5 because it is the addition of this and this together which is making it 53.5 i understand then what else here this one this one you can easily work out it's just 150 into 55 percent what is it 82.5 right 82.5 so here it will be 82.5 and 82.5 minus 50 will be How much? Oh, like this bit. This one. So this is since this is fifty three point five, fifty three point five minus ten, you take forty three point five. Because if you take it like this, eighty two point five minus fifty. How much it will be? It will be 32.5. You want to take the higher expected value. The one which gives you the higher expected value. If you take it like this, 82.5 minus 50, it will give you 32.5. Whereas if you come from this side, it will give you 43.5. Okay. So now let's explain. In the exam, you don't have to draw the diagram, no worry. But diagram will be given to you, you have to be able to be interpret. Okay. So now you can start this in any way from bottom of the tree, from top of the tree. Okay. So just give me a minute. So in this case, what's happening? They are giving you three decisions. Okay. The first decision has to be either to test, to drill, or to sell the rights okay if we follow the drill we come by a chance point that's why it is represented by circle whenever circle is there that means there's a chance of this happening that happening if probabilities is given like that you draw a circle and that happens when you're drilling okay so if you drill there are two possible outcomes 
55% chance of getting a positive or finding an oil and getting a positive return. Also, 45% chance of not getting the oil and no return. So when you compare, okay, if you go by this drill now, you see it is 32.5, whereas this is 43.5. So you have to choose this one, obviously, the testing, because this gives you the higher expected value. You have to compare this, the two. And the middle branch of the tree shows expected value selling from the right only 40. So the highest is this one, 43.5. You see, highest expected value is by testing. So that's the decision that you have to do. So the best decision is to test. That's what you're going to advise based on the expected value. So here, see, when you go by test, okay, you can say which order you are going. I will use a different color, highlighter, green highlighter. If oil is present, okay, in this case, oil is present, then drilling should be done because you came like this. If no oil is there, the other way around, then you should sell the right because this is 15. This is giving a higher, you see this and this. So when, once you test, this is how you have to say once you test and you get the oil, you drill. If you do not get the oil, you sell the right. That's what you do because that gives you the maximum expected value. That's how when you come back also, that's how you get this 43.5. Now do you understand? Now let us go to the benefits and the drawbacks of the decision tree before we conclude this lecture. So you have just seen the decision tree. Now let's talk about the benefits and the drawbacks. Number one benefit, as you can see, when it was in sentences, it's very difficult to take a decision. But when it was mapped out, you can clearly see all the possible outcomes. Okay, and you can also see that they are interrelated. So that's the main advantage. Second, they are specially beneficial when one outcome affects another. For that, decision tree is very helpful. Okay. Third, the analysis is made clearer by anoting the probabilities with the probability, the cash flow, and also the expected value based on that which you can take a decision. Okay, that means what is the optimum decision which gives you the highest expected value? That is the optimum decision, the best decision. Now, the drawbacks is there is only one drawback. What is it? All these are uncertain. The probabilities that you have assigned, it is subjective. The cash flow that you expected to receive, it is subjective. Okay. And T diagram says that this is the only way to take a decision. No, because it is just based on expected value. Earlier, we have seen the drawbacks of expected value also. That where the events are one off, you cannot. Expected value is not useful there. So if you see in this scenario, what happened? Testing drill proves positive, right? Once you have tested the drilling. And the tree also told that the company should drill rather than selling the right. But there is a 20% chance of losing 50 million. So a risk averse company, the one who does not like taking risk. Okay, what would they do? They would decide to go by the safer option and they might want to sell the right and settle for just 65 million rather than having a 20% chance of losing 50 million. Right. So there are two areas that we covered in this lecture. We started with funding strategy and here we started with equity like right issue or new issue. Both has their cost. Okay, issue cost is there. Then debt like loans or debenture. Loans are usually medium term. Debentures are for long term. Okay, and debt is most of the time. Normally it is less it is cheaper than equity because 
debt has advantages that the interest is tax deductible whereas dividend does not have that okay but on the other hand the disadvantages of debt is you have to pay the interest obligation is there but equity whether you pay dividend or not it's entirely up to you other like leasing vcs venture capitalist and government grants okay then we have this checklist these are the factors that will determine which source of finance you should take number one the cost lower the cost better it is but it's not always just entirely on one factor sometimes you have to look other factors also like control if you sell your shares you're losing the control having debt will not give you the voting rights availability if you are already breaching your covenant of debt you cannot take further debt okay gearing your gearing position your debt compared to equity is very high which is giving a risk so you cannot increase your you cannot expand by having further debt you have to reduce your debt security which assets are you giving as a security do you have the assets also or not cash flow the impact on the cash flow what is the impact exit route like venture capitalists they want to get the return as early as possible and exit within five to seven years one example so the next part was decision making here we went through the relevant cost what are they future cost incremental cost and cash that means future cost means anything that has happened in the past like sunk cost money span of research and development do not take incremental something that gets affected only with that decision otherwise no change in cost cash we do not take profit we take cash break even analysis we went through the formula it is based on contribution contribution means your sales minus variable cost and break even formula is your fixed cost divided by your contribution now the question might ask break revenue sorry break even in terms of sales revenue or break even in terms of number of units if it is break even in terms of number of units it is fixed cost divided by contribution per unit if it is break even in sales revenue it is fixed cost divided by contribution sales ratio understand this difference then project appraisal and also yeah remember margin of safety and all those things which comes with break even okay then project you appraise project using this four methods that means long term investments number 1 net present value positive except second arr arr is the only technique that uses profit you should have your profit and initial investment profit divided by initial investment irr where you don't know the cost of capital and you want your net present value so you do trial and error there okay net present value also means you should have the cost of capital and with some cash flow so that you discount the cash flow by using the cost of capital to find the present value that is net present value and finally payback how fast are you able to recover your cash the earlier the payback the better it is but each have their limitations that you should know right when it is used advantages disadvantages you should know of all this four methods finally we concluded with how to manage risk one is expected value but limitations is it is not useful if it's a one off project second ignores attitude to risk some shareholders might be uh, risk averse they do not want to take risk even if that is giving you the highest expected value risk is also high right third it is based on subjective information the decision tree what probability cash flow expected value all these are subjective information so these are the limitations thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture which will be the last lecture under your finance before we move on to our last section right which will be all about strategic change and project management and all those things last lecture on finance that is lecture 30 the next lecture will be about cost and management accounting where there we are going to cover all budget variants uh, various types of budgeting cost uh, variants standard costing that means lots of calculations also will be there right and you need to practice calculations too even though not in so much detail 
for dear at least for four to five marks also that also counts because sometimes you have to give recommendation based on those calculations sometimes you cannot give an advice if you are not able to calculate also right so that's the thing so those are the things we are going to cover most of the management accounting knowledge we are going to use in the next lecture also performance management so thank you for watching if you have not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and and one more thing thank you all my subscriber thank you for helping me to reach 5k subscriber i have reached surplus to the 5k subscriber two days back thank you so much for it all of that uh all of you like all of my subscriber who have subscribed me matters a lot each one of you matters a lot to me right so thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture